Hello, and welcome to these videos about EcoStructure GeoSCADA Expert, the remote SCADA and telemetry software from Schneider Electric. My name is Steve, and in this video, we're going to look at GeoSCADA Expert's MQTT Spark Plug B driver, new to GeoSCADA 2022. First, let's talk about MQTT Communications, which is a publish subscribe system with a central broker or server. The broker receives published data and passes it to subscribers, allowing more than one consumer of a data source. It's important for message content or the payload to be invisible to the broker, as the broker is a general purpose software module available to many applications in an enterprise, so it mustn't interfere with that content. The subscribers, and there can be many, receive new payloads from publishers only when the subscribers are connected to the broker. In a SCADA context, we'll need remote devices to be subscribers too, so that they can receive commands. We can use this and the birth and death messages so that subscribers can be aware of devices that are connected and disconnected. A birth message is just the first message after connecting up and can give meaning to the following messages. A death message is also sent on connection, but is held waiting by the broker until a device has its connection broken. MQTT messages consist of the payload of any data content and a topic which functions like an address. The topic looks like a hierarchy, enabling subscribers to receive just the branch of payloads they need, and it identifies the source of that payload. For Sparkplug, the topic structure has a group ID to sectionalize different communicating equipment, then nodes for identifying the broad source of data, such as an RTU or PLC, then optionally a device level, which you might use for pumps or for meters on the same RTU. That hierarchy is reflected in the GeoSCADA items that you create and the way that they can be placed into the groups or folders. The Spark Plug payload is binary code in a format called Protobuf. It broadly contains a list of points and their values with other attributes. These points or tags are also called metrics in spark plug terms. Metrics are attached to either nodes or devices, and they have a type such as a binary, integer, floating point number, or text string, like a SCADA point. So that's the basics covered. Now let's see how to create a spark plug node and a device to feed data to GeoSCADA. I'm using the NodeRed IoT platform to do this. Firstly, let's add a new node type to the palette for Sparkplug. Select Manage Palette from the main menu, then select Install and type MQTT Sparkplug Plus, then select the Install button. Once installed, drag the MQTT Sparkplug device node onto the canvas. I've done this already here, so let's double click and look at the properties. You can use the metrics box to add a list of the points that this device is managing. Each has a name and a data type. At the top, you can enter a device name. Then select the link to the broker and node details. Enter the broker details in the connection tab and in the spark plug tab, enter the node name and group name. I'm not showing the broker setup. It's a simple installation of the standard Mosquito Broker. This Node-RED Sparkplug Plus node type only supports points that are attached to devices, not points attached to nodes. To get ready to feed data into the device, create an injection node and add a payload defined in the JSON syntax. Note that while JSON is used to create the data here, it's encoded in binary protobuf format for transmission. The payload has a list of point names and values, and optionally, you can add timestamps for each value. Another optional step is to add a definition to the metrics. This enables you to set properties like engineering units for the metrics, 
and is in the first or birth message sent for the device or node. We'll see later how GeoSCADA can use this information. Now let's turn to Vuex and look at the GeoSCADA item configuration for Sparkplug. These items have already been created here, but I'm going to show you the Create New menu and find the MQTT branch. We'll see that the Sparkplug driver has got its own broker configuration item, so please use that one. Then there are the Sparkplug group objects with ID and the Sparkplug node with group reference and edge of network node ID. And finally, the Sparkplug device with node reference and device ID. Let's go back to node red and send in the metrics. We've not configured any points in GeoSCADA yet, but you can see that a binary payload has been delivered to the broker. Back to Vuex, we can check the status of our node and broker and see that they have received birth messages. By selecting the Create Points from Birth Metrics method, we're telling GeoSCADA to configure points automatically. I'll do that for both the node and the broker and then reopen the group folders. The node has some node control points automatically included in its birth message by node red, such as the birth and death sequence number and a point to request node rebirth. The device has the points we named and they're in the group structure that we requested. After creating the points, they can receive data. This is either from data values received in a new birth message or a specific device data message. We'll do that by using the node red inject node, copying it, removing the definition and adding new point value. We'll deploy that to node red and execute it now to send data. Now switch to Vuex and show that new data has been received. Remember when I mentioned that the birth message can contain properties like engineering units for the metrics sent in the birth message. These values can be configured by GeoSCADA when the points are automatically created. The item needed to make this work is called a property translation table. Let's create a text file to define how Sparkplug properties map into GeoSCADA properties. In Vuex, we then create a property translation table item and we attach it to the relevant nodes and devices. We then import the text file and it will check that it was formatted correctly. Finally, we'll remove and reinstate the analog point, showing that the units property has been set from the Sparkplug device. Here's a recap of the subjects covered this time. We looked at the Sparkplug B broker, the namespace, nodes and devices, point types, receiving data, automatic point creation, and setting point properties. Thank you, goodbye, and please join me again.